Hi, it's Carol Graham with Praying for Miracles with Carol. My question for you today is, what do you think this verse means? And the verse is Romans 10, 17, which says, So then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of God. We've heard that verse. We've repeated that verse. We think we understand that verse. But what does that really mean? Does that mean that we go to church and we hear a sermon or we listen to a video or we watch something on TV, a, a minister, whatever, a teacher, and we are hearing the word of God? What does it mean to really hear the word? So, as you know what I love to do, I love to look at the original, either the Greek or the Hebrew, and determine what that word hearing means. And what the word hearing in that verse means is to hear with our spiritual ears. Not these on the side of our head, but this ear the ear that is in our heart, the ear that is in our spirit. If you look on my YouTube channel or on my website, prayingmiracles.com, there are dozens of videos and articles on how to hear God's voice. Because this is an age-old question that people keep asking, and the answer is in the Word itself. It is so easy to understand how to hear God's voice when we, know, when we find out how to do that. And this is spiritual hearing. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't hear sermons or hear, you know, uh, read the word out loud or anything. No, not at all. But what it means is we need to take it a step further. Why? Why do we need to take it a step further? Because when we hear with these ears, this is head knowledge. You know, an atheist can read the Bible, or he can hear someone um, uh, reading the Bible, or, or, or see a movie, or any number of things where the Bible is quoted, or he could read the Bible from beginning to end, and he could hear and listen to what is being said, and it doesn't necessarily penetrate. He is hearing it with his natural ears. Many Christians hear God's word with their natural ears. But what is so clear here is we must hear the word with our spiritual ears because that is where we get faith. People ask me for decades, how do I grow my faith? You grow your faith very simply using this verse. Cultivate hearing with your spiritual ears, the ears in your heart rather than in your head. Cultivate that. And how do we do that? By meditating on God's word. I'll give you a very simple verse and how to do that so that you can experience this for yourself. Let's just look at Psalms 23. Now it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And we stand on that and we say, yes, we understand that the Lord is our shepherd and we do not have to live in want and we can, we can live in, in divine health, we can live in prosperity and everything else. And they're saying it and giving that verse lip service. But nothing changes because they haven't grasped it with their spiritual ears and what God is saying to their hearts. It's like the story that I share on this channel and many, and also on my website of my healing. When God promised me healing from cancer, it wasn't just that promise that I, I knew was coming from the word of God. 
but it was coming from God's mouth to my heart, God's word to my heart, that nothing could rob that from me because I got that word by meditating on that word that God promised me, me health and healing. And so I didn't allow anything to take that. I didn't allow fear of a cancer diagnosis to take that away from me or a negative doctor's report. I stood on what God's word said and that Jesus came so that I may have health, so that I may not only have life, but abundant life. And I repeated it, and I meditated on it, and I turned it into a prayer of thanksgiving, thanking God that His Word is yes and amen. His Word is true, and it is for each of us who chooses to believe it. You see, that's the simplicity. And so when we say, I shall not want because the Lord is my shepherd, we turn that into a prayer of thanksgiving. Lord, your word says, I shall not want. I shall not live in lack. I shall not live in pain and suffering because your word promises me that you are my shepherd and you take care of your sheep and you protect the, our, your sheep. And you give your sheep provision for anything and everything that they need. This is what I thank you for. And I turn that, that negative um, prognosis or whatever it was, diagnosis, into a prayer of thanksgiving. I can live in health. I can realize all the promises of your word because I choose to believe them. I choose to meditate on them. And the reason we meditate on those verses that God gives us is so that we get them into our heart. It's not just lip service. We pray them in a prayer of thanksgiving back to him until they are so real that you can almost taste them, that you can feel them, that you can see them, that you can hear them with your spiritual ears and not just giving those words lip service. And this is why it gets exciting. And this is why when we get that knowledge of his promises into our heart, there is nothing to deny it. There is nothing to take it away from us. God has planted that seed in our heart. And faith then builds. Because faith comes by hearing God's word and getting that into our hearts. Faith comes, and we don't lack. We don't lack wisdom. We don't lack health. We don't lack provision. We don't lack direction. We have what we ask God for because we choose to thank Him for the provision that He has given us, that He has promised us. And we begin to see the fulfillment of these things come to pass. Understand that God wants abundant life for you. He does not want you to live in lack or in pain or in suffering. I have a video on this subject about meditating on the word out of Joshua 1.8 and to get that word into your heart. I recommend that you listen to this and get it into your heart, the understanding of how to meditate on God's word so that you can hear his word in your spirit. Some people say, well, that's just the prosperity gospel and I don't believe that. And you're just, you're just preaching, you know, that we can all be prosperous. Well, I got news for you. There is only one gospel. And when you choose to believe what God has promised you through his covenant in the New Testament, that we can live an abundant life because of what Christ did, because the battles are already won, because He is victorious in our lives. When we understand that that is the truth of the Word and the gospel that is should be heard, and that is the truth. God's Word is yes and amen. He doesn't make suggestions. 
he makes statements. He says that I have come to give you not just life, but abundant life. What does that mean? You see, you can take even that verse and turn it into a prayer of thanksgiving. Lord, I'm struggling right now. I don't know what way to turn. I don't know what to do. So many things are coming against me. But your word says that you came so that I can have abundant life. And so I choose to believe that. I am going to stand on that. I'm going to pray that as a prayer of thanksgiving so that when the negative thoughts come, and when the pain comes, and when the bills come, I can turn that around and I say, thank you, God, you have made provision through Jesus. That is what is in the word. That is the gospel and the truth that God wants you to hear. Thank you for listening. This is Carol Graham with Praying for Miracles with Carol. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Send me your, send me your thoughts. Send me your questions. Send me your prayer requests. And definitely send me your testimonies. Go to my website, prayingmiracles.com, and I'll see you there.